Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving deep into a weapon that quietly shaped the early air power of Israel, a missile that rarely gets mainstream attention but played a decisive role in making Israel's air force one of the most feared in the Middle East. The Shafria missile, developed when Israel was still struggling for survival, became a symbol of innovation born out of necessity. In this video we break down how it was built, why it mattered, and how it gave Israel an early air superiority edge long before the country had access to the world's most advanced aircraft. This missile is not just a weapon, it is a story of determination, intelligence, and the will to survive in one of the world's most hostile regions. The Shafria project started during the late 1950s when Israel was heavily restricted from buying advanced weaponry from foreign suppliers. Most countries refused to sell Israel modern missiles, and the ones that did only provided outdated or limited systems. Israel understood that if it wanted to survive repeated threats from its neighboring states, it needed weapons it could rely on without external approval. This led to the founding of Israel Aerospace Industries and the bold decision to build its own missile from scratch. At that time, Israel didn't have a deep technology base, but it had brilliant engineers and pilots who knew exactly what they needed in combat. The first version of the Shafrir missile was not perfect. It was simple, short-range, and limited in tracking ability, but it was built with one mission in mind, to give Israeli pilots a fighting chance in dogfights. The missile used an infrared homing seeker that locked onto the heat signature of enemy aircraft. Although this early seeker could easily be confused by sunlight, background heat, or flares, it was good enough to change the dynamics of combat during an era when close, range engagements were still the norm. One of the most important things about the Shafrir was that it was entirely domestically produced. Israel could test it, modify it, and upgrade it without waiting for foreign permission. Every month, engineers sat with fighter pilots to learn what worked and what didn't. Over dozens of tests and thousands of simulations, they shaped a missile that fit the unique combat environment of the Middle East, from desert heat to nighttime operations. Unlike large militaries that often rely on slow bureaucratic processes, Israel built a tight feedback loop between the battlefield and the factory. When the Six-Day War erupted in 1967, the first Shafria missiles saw real combat for the first time. Although their success rate was limited compared to expectations, the war became a testing ground that confirmed which upgrades were most critical. Engineers went back and completely redesigned the missile, resulting in the far superior Shafria II. This second version became the real game changer, it was more reliable, had a better seeker, and offered much higher kill probability. The improvements were so dramatic that Shafrir II became one of the most successful short-range air-to-air missiles in the world at that time. During the Yom Kippur War of 1973, Shafrir II demonstrated its true power. Israeli fighter pilots flying Mirage Roman III and Nesher jets used it to devastating effect. According to many historical claims, the Shafria II was credited with dozens of aerial kills, making it one of the core weapons of Israel's air victories. It allowed Israeli pilots to challenge larger Arab air forces, equipped with Soviet technology like the Mi-G-21. The missile gave Israel confidence to push aggressively into contested airspace and help shape the doctrine of Israeli air dominance that continues today. One of the biggest strengths of the Shafria II was its improved infrared seeker, while early IR missiles often needed a rear aspect lock, the Shafrir II could engage from much better angles. This gave Israeli pilots the ability to strike faster and with less maneuvering. Its lightweight design also meant aircraft could carry more of them without sacrificing performance. The missile was compact and easy to maintain in harsh desert conditions. For pilots flying in high-stress combat, reliability was everything and Shafrir II delivered consistency at a level that surprised even some foreign observers. Another key factor in the missile's success was Israel's training culture. The Shafrir was not just a missile, it was part of a tightly integrated system that included pilot training, mission planning, and rapid adaptation. Israeli pilots trained with the missile extensively, learning exactly how it behaved at different altitudes, speeds, and temperatures. This intimate familiarity allowed them to use it more effectively than pilots from larger militaries who had less hands-on experience with their weapons. When combined with Israel's aggressive, fast-reaction combat doctrine, 
the missile became far more deadly than its size suggested. After its success in the Yom Kippur War, the Shafrir II gained international attention. Several countries began purchasing versions of the missile, including Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, and South Africa. This marked the beginning of Israel's rise as a major global exporter of military technology. The lessons learned from the Shafrir program directly influenced future designs like the Python 3, Python 4, and eventually the world, class Python 5. Today, the Python 5 is considered one of the most advanced dogfight missiles in the world, but its roots can be traced directly back to the early struggles and breakthroughs of the Shafrir project. The evolution from Shafrir to Python represents a shift from basic heat, seeking design to multi-spectral high agility high off boresight missiles. But at the heart of this evolution was one idea. Israel would never again rely on foreign powers to defend its skies. The Shafrir was the first major step toward that independence. Without it, the Israeli Air Force would have entered the 1970s with outdated, unreliable foreign missiles. Instead, it entered the decade with one of the most effective short-range missiles ever fielded at that time. Even though Shafrir is not widely discussed in modern defense circles, its importance cannot be overstated. It allowed Israel to experiment early with seeker technologies, control surfaces, propulsion methods, and aerodynamic designs. Engineers gained hands on experience in missile development decades before most other small nations even attempted such projects. This early head start became one of the key factors that allowed Israel to eventually develop world, leading weapons like Iron Dome, David's Sling, Arrow, and advanced air-to-air -air missile families. The Shafrir also changed how Israeli pilots approached combat. Before the missile, pilots relied heavily on guns and close in maneuvering. Dogfights were extremely dangerous and required pilots to enter risky turning engagements. With the Shafrir too, Israeli pilots could engage earlier, faster, and more safely. This shifted Israeli air tactics toward energy-based combat, giving pilots more flexibility to climb, dive, and reposition for follow-up engagements. In many historical dogfight accounts, Israeli pilots described the Shafrir II as a confidence weapon, something they trusted completely when facing enemy jets. Another important aspect of the Shafrir story is the environment in which it was developed. Israel had limited resources, small factories, and almost no access to advanced foreign components. Every part of the missile had to be built using whatever materials and machinery were available locally. Engineers had to innovate constantly, developing new machining techniques, new cooling methods for the seeker head, and new guidance algorithms. This spirit of innovation doing more with less became a defining characteristic of Israeli defense technology. The Shafrir also represented the beginning of Israel's philosophy of rapid iteration. Unlike many countries that release a missile every decade, Israel constantly modified and refined its designs. Between Shafrir 1 and Shafrir 2, nearly every component was changed or improved. This approach eventually led to the Python series, where each new version introduced radical upgrades rather than small improvements. The Shafrir program taught Israel's engineers that speed, adaptability, and constant upgrades were more important than chasing perfection on the first try. The combat results of the Shafrir too speak for themselves. Numerous historical sources note that the missile may have achieved one of the highest kill-to-launch ratios of its era. While Soviet missiles like the R-3s were struggling with reliability issues, the Shafrir too often performed above expectations. Israeli pilots trusted it so much that it became their primary dogfight weapon for years. Even when the U.S. later supplied missiles like the AM-9 Sidewinder, Israeli pilots continued to prefer their locally developed weapon in many cases. With time, the Shafrir was replaced by newer models, but its legacy remained strong. It laid the groundwork for Israel to become a global leader in short-range missile technology. It proved that a small nation, under immense pressure and facing constant threats, could innovate at a world-class level. Every modern Israeli missile, from the Python family to the SPICE precision system, carries the DNA of the Shafrir project. It showed that when necessity meets determination, even seemingly impossible technological challenges can be overcome. When we look at Israel's air dominance today with advanced jets like the F-35i Adir and powerful air defense systems, 
it's easy to forget that everything started with simple, early weapons like the Shafrir. Without it, Israel would not have gained the combat experience, engineering skills, or tactical confidence that ultimately shaped its air doctrine. The Shafrir missile wasn't just a technical achievement. It was a turning point in Israel's military history. The story of the Shafrir is also a reminder of how air power evolves. Early missiles were unreliable and limited, but they provided the foundation for rapid advancements. They forced engineers to push boundaries and inspired pilots to adapt to new combat methods. In this sense, the Shafrir symbolizes the beginning of Israel's modern air warfare capabilities. It bridged the gap between gun-based dogfights and advanced missile engagements, preparing Israel for the height, ek air battles of the future. Today, military historians and aviation experts often highlight the Shafrir II as one of the most successful missile programs of its generation. Its performance in real combat, its impact on regional air balance, and its role in establishing Israel as a defense innovator make it a remarkable achievement. Even though it is overshadowed by newer systems, the missile remains a significant chapter in air combat history. As we reflect on Israel's early air superiority edge, the Shafrir stands out not just as a missile, but as a symbol of national resilience. It was built in a time of great uncertainty, under immense pressure, with limited resources, by people who believed their country's survival depended on it. Its success is a testament to what can happen when innovation, necessity, and determination come together. The story of the Shafrir is the story of Israel's rise in the world of military aviation. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Shafrir missile and its impact on Israel's early air power, make sure to like the video, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more content on military, technology, and history. Your support helps us bring more detailed breakdowns and high-quality analysis to the channel. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more incredible stories behind the world's most powerful weapons.